Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. My name is Cedric and of course we are going to talk about another beer today. Another beer, another brewery. Today we are going to talk about Lupulus. Uh, Lupulus or Lupulus might sound familiar. Uh, we're not talking about Remus Lupin, uh, but it has something to do with that because lupulus is the name uh, the latin name for a wolf but i'm getting ahead of myself because today we are gonna talk about the lupulus hopera there we go lupulus is a beer produced by what used to be a small brewery in govi in the belgian ardennes now we have to rewind, we have to go back a little bit to the start of that brewery. And you will hear some names that will sound familiar. In 2004, there was a small brewery built somewhere amidst the fields and the beautiful creeks and then trees to supply a homemade beer for the tavern next door. It was a very tiny, very tiny brewery. And they actually only brewed two beers, uh, Le Bleuet et Le Fourquet. Uh, and I do believe that the tavern, but don't quote me on that, was called Fourquet as well. Now, this brewery was mainly run by two brothers-in-law. Two brothers uh, named Pierre Gobron and Chris Bauerart. And if you're thinking, hey, I've heard those names before. Yes, you absolutely have. Uh, I will link it through here. Because we have talked about La Chouf, uh, at least three times. Yeah. These are the same brothers-in-law. So Pierre and Chris um, mainly did their test brews here because this is a small batch brewery. And they made the beer for the tavern as well. Now, I say... 2004, but in 2006, Duval Mortiat buys La Chouf from the two brothers. So suddenly they have a lot of time and quite some money, or the other way around. And yeah, of course they want to do something. So the two brothers-in-law decide to take over the tiny brewery called Les Trois Fourquettes or the Three Forks in English. Now, there were some conditions. Uh, mainly, the main condition was that in the first five years, they could not produce any more than 1500 hectoliters. That's not much, especially if you've been brewing at La Chouf for 24 years. But keep in mind, this was a small batch brewery to supply a tavern, to do some test brews, and to, well, actually to make some local beer. Now, of course, these brothers were used to quite a bit. And in 2007, they decided to start brewing a new beer. They developed uh, a premium beer that they were going to sell in kegs and champagne bottles. And that's actually how I got to know it, like in the big champagne bottles. At first there was only this one beer and it was called Lupulus, as I already said. It was the Latin name for wolf. Why? Because they wanted it to have a connection with, with the location and it was said that in early days wolves roamed the Belgian Ardennes. Also, Lupulus refers to the Latin name for the hop plant. Hops in Latin are called Humulus lupulus, which actually translates to uh, humble wolf or little humble wolf. And you will see this in the depiction of some gods. They're always depicted, or she is always depicted, on a throne with uh, hop plants near her leg and then on the throne and a wolf beside her. So this was actually a brilliant name the link to the wolf to the location to the hops was there and it was a lovely beer it was actually a very herbal triple one of the first that i've ever tasted way back in the days 
So they started brewing that beer and called it Lupulus. Not long thereafter, in 2008, uh, Chris sells his 50% share to Pierre. And I actually had to look this up because I thought it was the other way around. But no, uh, Chris gave his 50% share to Pierre and Pierre uh, continued to run the brewery with his sons Tim and Julien. Uh, I actually think I even have a photo of these guys, I'll put it up here. In 2010, so three years after the new beer, and only four years after the takeover, so they're still uh, in the conditional period, they add Lupulus Brun. Lupulus Brun, as the name suggests, is a brown beer, still exists, and originally was only made for local consumption, because, like I said, they were still in the conditional period. Now, in 2011, the conditions were lifted, and in 2012, they commercialized the Lupulus Brun, uh, which was, of course, a very good commercial move because it's also an awesome beer. A few years later in 2016 uh, business was going well and these guys yeah were growing through the roof again uh, just like the Schuf story. Lupulus is very very popular in Luxembourg and France as well. They started exporting to several countries and in 2016, they decided to install a new brew house uh, and a bottling line, totaling a capacity of 80,000 hectoliters, which is significantly more than the 1,500 uh, <laughs> that they were aiming for at the beginning. Also, the range grows. They have uh, Lupulus Organicus, the, the biological beer. They have uh, some fruity beers. They have, of course, the Triple and the Brun. And one of the beers that was added here was the Lupulus Hopera. I believe this came out in, I don't know, 2016 or 17? Not sure. And in 2017, this is a minor detail, they, well, they didn't develop it. They, they started making the old La Fourquette again, which was an, uh, a white beer, a wheat beer from the Ardennes. And now they brought it onto the market as Lupulus Blanche, White Lupulus or White Wolf. Um, each of the beers has their own branding, their own label. Uh, for example, the series that Hopera is a part of have very minimalistic labels with the wolf in their own color. The Fructus has a red one, the biological one, the... what's it called again? The Organicus has a green one and the Hopera has a blue one. Now let's have a look at the bottle. Ingredients, water, malted barley, hops, sugar and yeast. No surprises there. Hop Symphony, Belgian beer, dry hopping, pale ale. I can live with that. And of course the old modern slogan, Lupulus just fabulous, uh, which actually shows that they're aiming for the foreign markets. Okay. Now about this beer, uh, like I said, it's a pale ale. It is a top fermented beer, unfiltered, unpasteurized. And if we want to know anything else, because I haven't tried this before, We'll just have to open it up. At first glance, it's it appears quite clear, but there is a fair bit of yeast at the bottom. Also, beautiful branded bottle cap with the wolf's head and lupulus in its own color on the cap. One thing they took with them from the La Chouffe times. Hmm, smells rather heavy. What ABV does this have? Oh, it's only a 6% or so. Smells heavier, very malty. Would have expected it to smell 
much hoppier. And of course now I have moved the bottle around a bit too much. So I have to pour very, very, very carefully as not to pour in all the yeast. I don't mind a little bit, but uh, I also don't like to, to be able to chew my beer. There we go. Last centimeter is staying in. Hmm. Slightly hazy, rather orangey, golden, yellow. I've read somewhere leaning towards amber, but now this is orangey, golden. Then quite white foam. Now I'm getting the hop aromas. I don't know which hops, but they're rather fruity. Actually, the only thing that I know is that they used four hops. <laughs> but that doesn't tell us anything. Oh. Tastes a lot heavier and drier than, than were used from IPAs. It does have that rather spicy herbal scent as well. So I think that the combination of uh, yeast and hops and maybe some herbs deliver that rather dry taste. This is actually quite pleasant. It is nothing near uh, a New England IPA. This is a very, um, very thick mouthfeel, very full mouthfeel for a 6% ABV. I think it might have a, a bit more carbonation than other beers because the alcohol is really pushed in the taste. Probably some coriander because it does push some aromas as well. Mind you that normally I don't really like coriander, but in beer, I'm all right with it. I feel like I'm missing something here. There's something that I can't put my finger on it. But I do love this, this very dry aftertaste. This is a completely fermented beer, almost no left, leftover sugars. Now, I gotta be honest with you, this is not the freshest IPA I have in my fridge. This is a slightly older one. That's why I'm doing this now, because I don't want it to degrade over time. So it might be a bit less sweet because it's unpasteurized, unfiltered, so re-fermented in the bottle. And the iso-alpha acids, the aromas, yeah, they degrade over time. So might be the combination of not being super fresh and the recipe, of course, but I am very much into this beer. This is almost a saison when it comes to aftertaste, I mean. Also very, very crisp, very refreshing. Okay. Ah, there it is. I could have put my finger on it, but I think it's the combination of uh, those spicy herbal notes and some, some citrusy flavors that, that come peeking through. I've read somewhere exotic fruits, but I don't seem to detect that anywhere. Yeah, maybe in the smell, but not in the taste.
It is, however, a very powerful, strong, refreshing beer. Uh, a very varied hop palette. So I think that uh, Pierre still does what he does best, and that's experimenting with tastes, like he did with La Chouf, and he brings out great beers. So, uh, how should I score this? Let's call it a seven. Yeah. Three and a half in untapped. I think my most handed scores are between three and three and a half. So six to seven. Okay, I'm gonna savor this a bit more because like I said, it comes in heavy. It's like, uh, it's a 6% ABV, but it comes in like a duvel. So I'm gonna be careful with this one. And I am going through my fridge to see what the next videos that I'll be making are. Um, as usual, if you have anything to say, uh, go ahead. Let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, same thing. If you like this video, hit that thumb. Uh, that helps me in the algorithm as well. <coughs> Excuse me there. Someone commented last week, like, how do you only have 23 subscribers? Well, you can change that. Uh, <laughs> send a link to all your mates and <laughs> who knows, maybe we'll get to 26. Uh, <laughs> so if you wanna see more, if you're interested in what I'm gonna do next, uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll get notified uh, and maybe this is the time to tell you that I will be doing another advent calendar this year so even though I said that I'll be reducing my output to two a week I'm still doing three a week and I will be doing one every single day in December up until Christmas Eve so that being said there's no way back uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers you guys.